The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back, everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. Our next guest is Derek DeRuz, worldwide technical sales lead for IBM out in the trenches here. IBM at the show here, we had Inhee on earlier. She's great, we one of our CUBE favorites. Uh, she's dynamic, super smart, we love her. Uh, but IBM here is a testament to all the big whales that are here. Cisco's here, AT&T, I mean, the names go on, see Oracle. You got the big guys. IBM, huge install base. The growing pre-IPO companies like Cloudera, down to people getting their Series C funding to the early stage through Series B. Everyone's doing well in big data. Yes. So, what are you guys doing here at the show? So, the big thing that we're uh, promoting at the show this year is Big SQL. So, when people talk about SQL on Hadoop and so on, and, and there are about 10 fairly significant projects that are happening. And ours, uh, we think, is distinct because we, instead of rolling our own brand new kind of uh, relational engine for Hadoop, we took an established relational engine. We, we've done this very well over the years. Uh, we have 30 years plus worth of engineering experience, and we've taken all that wisdom that, that's been distilled through you know, discussions with customers and so on, and we've made that with, work with Hadoop. So we have an integration layer that we built effectively. And just to put a little plug in, because we cover a lot of your events with theCUBE, we love covering IBM's transformation. Certainly the strategy's looking good. Uh, IBM IOD has been changed to yeah. IBM Insights. Insights. So the conference's IOD, Information on Demand, is now yep. IBM Insights. So get that out of the way, share that with the folks out there. And the other one is you wrote a book. That's right, yes. Uh, uh, Hadoop for Dummies, which is, you know, good for, good for us on theCUBE here. We could go through this, <laughs> ask a few questions. Uh, what is MapReduce? Um, oh, replaced with cascading, <laughs> as we just found out <laughs> from Chris Wenzel. Um, well, this, great one, book. This, this one's for you, John. You can have it. I love it. <laughs> you know, I give it to my son. He's 12. Um, it's he the was, future. Yeah, he was doing he's a system on a chip and uh, programming just this weekend, so you know, maybe he can get into some MapReduce code. That's I'm right. I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> great book. Um, where can they pick this book up? Wiley brand? Yeah, it's so available online. on Amazon.com uh, and in local bookstores. What was the motivation on the book, just to get something out there for, for practitioners? Yeah, so one, one of the things that we found with uh, the Hadoop space is that, that there's an awful lot of content at the, at, the, at the surface level. So a lot of the slideware, architectures, that sort of thing. And suddenly, there's a, there's a deep chasm in the middle where there's nothing, and then you go you know, deep into Java code and so on and so forth. So there's really nothing in that, that, that level of where people want to get started. And so that, that essentially is what the book is about. So to take you from that high level piece and to get you working with uh, doing some very straightforward and basic things with Hadoop. You guys cover HBase in here at all? We have a big chapter on HBase, yeah. Okay. You seeing good things with HBase or I'm looking at the tag cloud and not as much conversation this week with HBase versus a couple of years um, ago. Yeah, and part of that as well is that uh, this is a, a Hortonworks conference. I mean, if you go, I mean, uh, if you go to the, the Cloudera conferences and so on, there's a lot more discussion on HBase because that's that's, yeah. that's they more have than HBase Con, which we covered the cube, the, yeah. the original yeah. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, w I would say, uh, I mean, in, in looking at uh, how how the cu our customer base is using Hadoop and, and our Hadoop offering Big Insights, I, I would say probably a good 30 to 40 percent are serious about HBase at a large scale. And then there's another 20 or 30 percent or so that are using HBase, uh, you know, for things like dimension tables and that sort of thing. On a so a very way. prominent industry analyst, Tony Baer, who you guys know, uh, covers big data. Um, he's in the, in the elite with Jeff Kelly and Merv Adrian, um, talking about the analyst. He said a quote this week, a blog post, that SQL's the gateway drug for the enterprise. Um, meaning, yeah. okay, it's going to the enterprise, and that is a good bridge to get started. So it's it's essentially big data for dummies, if you will, Hadoop for dummies. Okay, getting started. You got legacy infrastructure. Do you agree with that? Do you seeing is SQL being the, the the common language for getting started and bridging into a Hadoop framework? Uh, yeah, most definitely. I I, I I don't think it's the language. I think it's a language. I think it's a is perhaps one of the most important ones. And uh, I mean, and if you look at all the established tooling that's out there, uh, like, like Cognos and that sort of thing, those are, those are all SQL-based tools. And for, for, for those tools to work with Hadoop to be able to take advantage of the processing and the storage that Hadoop offers, then you have to have that SQL interface. And that, that was a big strategy behind Big SQL, which is take an established relational engine 
and effectively make it so that it can uh, it, it can handle the kind of queries and the workload that that, that a Cognos would spit out. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that we find with with a lot of the 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 other SQL on Hadoop solutions is that that they're they're very immature in terms of query support. So very like basic not things. Not full SQL, it's SQL like. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And there's, I mean, there's a big data Borat quote that, that they, <laughs> <laughs> he talks about uh, the biggest trend in, I mean, everybody in SQL is talking about how, how they support anti-SQL, but only the ones that they, that they happen to support. Right, kind of thing. Well, that's interesting. Let's take a step back. I think, uh, you know, with, with IBM, you've got a, a, you know, a deep and wide breadth of products around yeah, yeah. data management uh, and analytics, yes. uh, data integration. You name it, IBM's got a product for it. Um, yeah. So Hadoop, I think, can, uh, t to some extent, has kind of gotten lost in the shuffle at IBM, at least from a perception from our audience. So help us understand exactly where, where Hadoop fits in your larger strategy uh, at, yeah. at IBM. And then I want to dig into a little bit more about uh, the products that you're actually selling, sure. your insights yeah, specifically. Yeah. But just maybe first, just talk about the larger, larger uh, point about where it fits in. Yeah, so for, for us, Hadoop is, is critically important. So. The, the, the view that we have for, for Hadoop is, is not just a view for Hadoop, it's a view for the enterprise, the, for, for the data center. And we see Hadoop not, as a disruptive technology, not to replace the warehouse, but to enable you to get more value out of it. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea being that, that for you know, large scale ETL jobs, that you can, you can use that on Hadoop with a mature ETL tool like a data stage, for instance, which where you, can, you, know, you have your ETL engineers simply see Hadoop as yet another source or target, or a mm -hmm. place that work can happen. And at the same time, I mean, if people want to do I mean, use Hadoop as a landing zone, or, or, or I like Merv Adrian's term, the data reservoir, that kind of notion, mm -hmm. then, I mean, that makes piles and piles of sense. But I mean, the warehouse is still, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it's been designed to the nth degree by you know, performance engineers and so on to handle you know, large scale repeated queries of the same, you know, the same kind of reporting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Hadoop doesn't have the DNA to, in, order, in order to sustain that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hadoop has very different DNA that makes it very useful though for like, like a transformation and, uh, and, and dealing with you know, variable schema data, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well it's interesting as Hadoop develops where you know, it'll be interesting to watch the direction it goes. Yeah. Um, and where you know, there, there, there already is some overlap with the data warehouse and it'll be interesting to see if that if that uh, overlap kind of continues, or yeah. or if they s seem to kind of find their own, as John likes to put their own swimming yeah. lanes, and, and they kind of find yeah. their their place. Um, but let's dig a little bit more in specifics around sure. Hadoop at IBM. So you've got big insights as your distribution. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, talk a little bit about how you package up and sell that. And and yeah. well, let, let me even take a step back. Do you do you do you monetize that, or do you give that away for free? Um, and how do you kind of uh, how do you make it into a product? Yeah. yeah. So th there. I'd like to break it down in, in, into two kind of uh, main areas of focus. So, I mean, there's some, some customers that focus on, on both of these, and, and in many cases, it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, it's about, uh, about infrastructure, about uh, workload isolation, storage isolation, that kind of thing. And with Big Insights, we, have, uh, we, we, we do have an optional alternate file system. I mean, we can use HDFS, or you can use IBM's file system called GPFS. Mm -hmm which came out of high performance computing environments and, and, and enables very nicely that storage isolation, uh, rep, like a multi-site replication, all those sorts of things that, that, that people need in, in certain circumstances. We also have workload isolation and, and workload enhancement through a tool called Platform Symphony. So Platform was, a, was an acquisition that we, uh, that we brought on probably about, I want to say, about a year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're based out of my hometown, Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're very big in the uh, in, in the, the 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 financial space where you have a lot of racks, uh, a lot of blade servers, and, uh, and and you need to manage the workload between those. Mm -hmm. And that what they've effectively done with their offering, uh, which is now uh, you know parts that are bundled in with Big Insights, you and again it's an optional piece. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Is uh, you're, you're able to effectively treat Hadoop like a grid which is an interesting notion. And I mean, yes, to some degree, Yarn and MapReduce uh, and, and, and Spark and so on are taking us there to, to a point, but at, it's still kind of an emerging space, mm. right? I mean, with Platform, we have mature, established software that's been around for a dozen or so years, which, and, and they know how to do this. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the one half, which is, uh, which is really around enterprise uh, stability around the base infrastructure. The other side of it is analytics. And in my, my opinion, that, that's where you have uh, a, a greater, I mean, that, that's where the opportunity 
to really use Hadoop as a, as a transformational tool for your business. That's where that comes in. Totally agree. And yeah, so I'm, I'm sure that most of the folks on your on your show have been going. Yeah, down well, I mean, road. we've had just earlier today somebody pointed out, you know, if you're just looking at Hadoop purely as a storage platform, yeah. you're kind of missing the point. I mean, it's, it yeah. can do that very well, but it's really the analytics and the insights that, yeah. that it enables that yeah. really makes it transformational, as you said. Yeah, so when John asked, uh, mentioned the quote about the gateway drug, mm -hmm. I, I see the, the cost saving potential of Hadoop as the gateway drug. Mm -hmm. So That's how you kind of get started, yeah, get in, yeah. and then yeah. move on to the analytics. Yeah, so it's kind of like, 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 like come for the, the, the commodity hardware, stay for the analytics kind of thing. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and so in terms of actually packaging it up, you've got a, a pure data for Hadoop, you've got the, the appliance, is that right? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So that that's uh, that, that's being that offering's being changed a little bit, and there'll be okay. some announcements about that that, that coming out, uh, which we're pretty pretty excited about. The uh, the so our, our, our Hadoop uh, model, and, and I'll just say this because people familiar are familiar with it, is uh, is very akin to what Cloudera has done. So mm -hmm. we have an enterprise edition, we have a uh, which has all the bells and whistles, every, like the full meal deal for analytics mm -hmm. and for you know the the, the, the the file system alternative and the the process mm -hmm. processing assistance, and then uh, and then we have our standard edition, which has what we I mean what what I like to talk about a lot, which is Big SQL mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 some of our other kind of uh, you know application developer tools, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, but we also have a free edition, mm -hmm. a quick start that you can download and install and use as, as much mm -hmm. as you like, mm -hmm. but now, uh, there's no support for so it. So is yeah. the is the free edition to what extent is it uh, you know Apache the open source versus yeah, yeah. some of the some of the project components? Yeah, good question. So w one of the uh, I mean so those that know about IBM Big Insights. <laughs> what, what they often say is, uh, I mean, this is IBM. This is a bit another, you know, one of the big whale companies that they they're, they want to lock us into their platform, and they're going to force us to use proprietary things that that that, that, that keep us tied to to them. Mm -hmm. So the, the core of, of IBM Big Insights is Apache open source. So the, the same components that Cloudera, Hortonworks, uh, I mean, that and if you download Big Top and kind of roll your own, mm -hmm. it's the same stuff. What we've done is we, we haven't monkeyed around or changed those things, we have extended it. So it's the embrace and extend model of doing work with open source, basically. So something like Big SQL is where you're extending it, exactly. but the core is Apache Hadoop. So you've got that That's open right. core model, yep. and then layering that with some proprietary tools right. that actually enhance the yep. capabilities. It's very cool. So, so like for our file system, I mean, at mm -hmm. install time, when, when you when you decide to, inst when, when you work on installing this, you choose, do you want to go, I mean, do you want to stick with HDFS, mm -hmm. which is entirely appropriate and suitable in a number of cases? Or if you have these complex replication requirements and so on, then GPFS is probably a better choice. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's an option, and right. uh, so it's not a lock-in in that sense. Okay. So let's talk about the uh, IBM situation. So IBM has got so much going on with open source. Yeah. Um, Blue Mix is around the corner. That's right. We're actually not around the corner. It's actually out there it's now. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's trying to get me to go to Blue Mix. Adam, let's talk if you're watching. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure he's watching, the most busy day he has. Um, so you got a lot of open source going on. So reconcile the, the big data strategy with all the work going on in the cloud and open source. Explain to the folks out there where IBM stays open and IBM be, becomes IBM. There's always IBM has value on top of it. Yeah. Can you kind of parse that through for the, for the customers out there? Sure, yeah. So. I'll come back to the analytics piece. So I, I mentioned there are like probably close to a dozen now of, uh, of these SQL on Hadoop projects. And it's not just SQL on Hadoop, it's also streaming data. So there are probably about a half dozen fairly significant projects of streaming data on Hadoop. And graph databases, statistics, all of those things. So I mean, I, I am very much an open source person. I mean, I've invested you know, the last number of years of my career in Hadoop. I wrote this dummies book. So I'm all in, and I, I completely believe in that, in that open source model, As, and, and that reflects IBM's value. We were one of the first companies to really back Linux, right, in the early 2000s. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to, I mean, so we, we don't, we don't uh, sell Linux, but we do make a lot of money through Linux by all the tools like, like DB2 and, and all these other tools that work on Linux. So contributing to that base, which we do do with Hadoop quite extensively, and most recently, uh, with HBase, for instance, we have uh, we have a number of uh, developers who who were code contributing to HBase to uh, solidify their backup and restore operations and so on. And that's something that we, we donated. We felt that it was e better to donate it than to monetize. I mean, it. IBM doesn't hide the fact. I mean, I interviewed Steve Mills, and he's yeah. very candid. We love enabling the market. Open source is a great yeah. you know uh, foundation to build off of to accelerate value fast, and we add value on top of that. I mean, that's, that's IBM. Right. That's what IBM does. It's not. Yes. There's no secret to that. Yeah. And you charge for it. But uh, that's true. <laughs> and so, but 
this is, this is an, uh, an emerging space. So Hadoop isn't done yet and it won't be done for a while. So while, while we have all these parallel efforts going on, like for instance with Big SQL, we think this is the best SQL alternative. And it's largely because we have established engineering we have a refined yeah. offering, one that works, one that is fully SQL compliant well, and so Actian on. might disagree with you on that one. They claim that they got the yeah. power platform. Well, we'll see in benchmarks. Bring it on, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's what I love about it. So let's make, let me get, let's go to Merv Ageman's quote. Um, so I brought up Tony. Um, obviously, Jeff was on stage at the keynote, so was Merv. Um, Tony's quote about the gateway drug. Merv's quote on the cube here was, Merv Ageman from Gartner said, mm -hmm. this is a 10 year uh, cycle. Yes. And I, I totally agree with him on that one. Yep. So if, if we're in a 10 year cycle, we got the dummies book out here. We're getting all up to speed. So the tinkerers are building for tooling. You're going to see a natural evolution around automation, reducing steps. We're yes. seeing cascading has got some traction. So things like that are, are making MapReduce better. Other things here and there. What has to happen in your mind to accelerate the evolution of Hadoop and the value that will emerge from it? I think it comes down to market demand, frankly. And one of the things that we're seeing in the market now is that, that people are done kicking tires. And kind of like Merv Adrian, Adrian's keynote address where, you know, where he made kind of light of the, the waiting for Godot play. Uh, so it's not time to wait anymore, it's time to move. And we're seeing, I mean, one of the things that's exciting about this year for us is that we're seeing across the board there's a, a much greater appetite. We're being asked about our Hadoop offering in, in many, many of our, of our, our, our yeah. customer engagement. Merv said it's about revenue, that's the new scorecard. Yeah. So talk about the customers. What are the best customer use cases that you could share? Don't have to name names on customers, but sure. just talk generically about the most popular Hadoop-like environments yeah, that yeah. you're engaging customers with. For me, the most important one, uh, both strategically from an IBM perspective, but also uh, when, it comes for, when it comes to customers to, to get value out of Hadoop, is warehouse modernization, which is effectively have Hadoop live alongside an established warehouse to, uh, to, to act as that landing zone, to act as a day zero archive, and also to, uh, to enable people to, to you know, offload transaction or, or a transformation work, so. Well, tell us what's, what's, you know, what's coming up for IBM and around big data, around Hadoop. Um, yeah. And you know, I think we're, we're, we've seen things with Watson and how that might play yes. in. Um, and because a, a lot of talk here at this show uh, have been about you know where are all the applications and here you know, one of the companies that's actually working on some of the applications is, is IBM with what you do with Watson and that's right. reaching out to developers the Watson Cloud. So tell us a little bit about uh, kind of what's on the future horizon and maybe if you could yeah. talk a little bit about the application landscape and, and your plans around that. Yeah, yeah. So so that, that's one of the I mean we're working in this space and especially working with research IBM Research is is one of the things that that, that keeps me really excited about working for IBM. Hmm. IBM Research is is truly elite. And there are two things that are that are coming out of uh, research that, that are going that are that are going to be making their way into the product at, at some point in the very near future, and that is uh, one is a I mean we, we have something called Big R now. So uh, the, the the question John just asked me earlier that I didn't finish answering uh, about you know the like is SQL the gateway drug and, and is it the most important language? I said it's a most, a important language. The other one other important languages are right. so we we have Big R. We're able to to run R on Hadoop not just with libraries, but with, with custom built code, which is extremely novel. At scale. At scale, Because R exactly. was not designed for that kind of distributed environment. Exactly, yeah. that's right. Now, the, I mean, the, the, the way big R works is, is it, 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 it breaks up the workload by partitioning data. That will not work for many statistical operations, of course. Like for, for a straightforward thing like a mean or an average, you can do that. But for you know, large scale machine learning, it falls apart. You, you will not get meaningful results. So what our research group has been doing, which is unique across, uh, across this industry, is that they have extended this and they've built their own uh, set of primitives and a compiler to, to, to take an R-like statistical language, basically treat it like a declarative language, which is very similar to SQL where you're not, you don't care how the work is done, mm -hmm. you just define you know, what the, the operations need to be, what, what, what the data needs to turn into. Mm -hmm. And so th they've done that for mm -hmm. statistics and they've built this compiler so that it can take care of, it, it take advantage of parallel architectures. Mm -hmm. So the, the, where possible, these algorithms will be parallelized. And that, that's something that's, 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 that's a, a, an extremely non, it's as, as non-trivial a, a, a project <laughs> in computer science as, as, as can happen. Mm -hmm. The, the other is, uh, is entity analytics. Mm -hmm. That's another project that came out of research. And again, this is, these, are, these are very, I mean, language, like understanding the context and meaning of what people say or what they type on their computers mm -hmm. is another almost nearly impossible thing to do. 
context matters, audience matters, all those things. So we, we have this analytics framework, which is built on top of our text analytics, which mm -hmm. also came out of research, but has been in our product for a long time, uh, to be able to do you know, really interesting things like matching and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. All right, well, we'll look for that for sure. Derek, yeah. thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching, and then thanks for the, the nice comments you said before we came on camera. Your book here, Glad Hadoop to be for here. Dummies. I tweeted it out on the crowd chat, go check it out. Uh, uh, from Wiley, just search on Amazon. Uh, Hadoop for Dummies gets you up to speed. It's really about Hadoop 2 forward. It's exactly. cutting edge data on, uh, on getting your arms uh, around the value proposition of Hadoop quickly. Um, it's really not for dummies if you actually can read the book, exactly, you're not yeah, a dummy. Yeah. So like, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a good right. primer of, of what's going on out there. Thanks for coming on, we really appreciate it. Right. We'll be right back after this short break here at Hadoop Summit. We'll be right back. Thank you very much.